When I first started making Minecraft animations back in 2017, I always struggled with one thing. Time. It took me a lot of time to make animations. Sometimes I would work for months and months to complete one short animation. But along the way, I learned a few things which helped me tremendously and they allowed me to animate a lot faster and save a lot of time and headache. So in this video, I will show you 5 things that will save you a lot of time and allow you to make more animations and less time. The last tip is my favorite so be sure to stick around to find out. Also, if you want to see more Blender and Minecraft animation tutorials, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Now, let's begin. Number 1. Planning Planning your animation is the first important thing you should focus on. This involves writing the script and preparing the characters, skins, objects, maps, and everything you will be using in your animation. I know for some of you this might be the most boring part of the animation, or for some of you it might be the opposite, but it's very important to plan everything out before you move on to the technical part. Now, keep in mind that once you start animating, there might be slight changes you make that were not considered in the planning phase, but that's totally fine. The main thing you should take away from this is that if you don't plan your animation and you don't have a roadmap and a brief picture of what you will make in the future, then it will be chaos and confusion, and most importantly, a huge waste of time. Now, don't get me wrong, when you are learning 3D, you want to experiment, make mistakes, learn from them, and improve. That way, even if you spend countless hours learning something new, then it cannot be considered a waste of time and it's a positive thing. However, planning your animation, organizing your files, and preparing everything before your technical steps can be a great way to save some of that time and avoid or make fewer mistakes than you would have made without planning. Number 2. Get rid of distractions. If you want to be productive and get more done in less time, then it's very important to eliminate distractions while you're working. This applies not only to 3D animations, but to pretty much every type of work. There are many books and studies that show that getting rid of distractions skyrockets your productivity. For example, if you're animating or editing and you pick up your phone and then get back to your PC, it takes about 15 minutes for your brain to go back to the full focus that you had before. Also, keep in mind that it's possible to do more in 4 hours without distractions than in 8 hours with distraction. Don't believe me? Try it yourself. But also, if you are expecting a call or message from someone, then in that case, yeah, keep your phone turned on, but most of the time, it's ideal to keep your phone and other distractions off while you're working. Also, you can tell your friends and family members that on this day and on this hour, you will be busy and you will be doing something, so that they are also aware. This also applies to studying, working out, doing tasks at your job, and so on. Turning off distractions and taking your time to fully commit to something will save you many, many hours. And when you are fully focused on your tasks and you have your distractions temporarily off, magic happens. Apart from the phone, distractions also include things like watching YouTube, movies, TV shows, gaming, and a lot more. Now, all of those things can be a great way to entertain yourself. But if you do them during your working hours or at the time you are supposed to be productive, then they will distract you and waste your time. Personally, I like to first complete my tasks, make videos, animations, or whatever I have planned and then indulge in entertaining activities such as binging YouTube videos, TV shows, and so on. So it means that I first worked on my task and then rewarded myself for completing the task. Number 3. Blocking your animation Blocking your animation is important to get the spacing and timing of your characters, objects, and camera. Basically, during the blocking phase, you only move around your camera and your character's root bones. And then, once everything is ready, you continue to the next steps and add your main movements, in between movements and polishing. So in this example, you can see one of my animation scenes, which I will release in a few months. But here you can see that the character is sliding and doing nothing. Then the camera cuts to the villains who are also doing nothing, they are only standing and only their root bones are moving around. After I get the timing and spacing of the camera and the characters, I added the movements and made the animation look like this. Basically I went step by step, then my first step was blocking my animation. And then I added the other movements such as in-betweens and polishing and other details. Now, you can also avoid this step and jump straight to the animation. But keep in mind that if you make mistakes, you have to redo the entire animation. However, if you make a mistake during the blockout part, for example your timing is off or your spacing is off, you have some character placed far away or too close, then you only have to readjust the camera and the root bone movements. So you won't have to adjust too much. And you won't spend too much time doing it. Now, once you feel like your block out is ready, you can move on to the animation part. Number 4. Pose Library Pose libraries are awesome and they save you a lot of time while working on animations. So, if I'm animating a scene and I want my character to lift his hands in the excitement, then instead of animating it from scratch, I can select my character's bones, which I want to be animated, go to the frame where I want my character to do this motion, 
and then go to my pose library and select the pose which I named happy hands and then double click on it. Once I double click on it, this will apply the pose to my character and also set a keyframe for it if I have the auto keyframe enabled. You can do this not only for the body but for the facial expressions as well. If I want my character to be angry, then I can go to my pose library again and while I have my bone selected and I'm in the frame I want to be, I can just double click on the pose and it will make my character angry. So the pose library allows us to apply poses with one click. But before you can use these, you need to create a pose library yourself from scratch. This will take some time, but it will be well worth it for the future. If you want to learn how to create the pose library, then be sure to leave a comment down below and I will make a detailed tutorial about it. But meanwhile, there are other tutorials about creating the pose libraries on YouTube and you can search around for them if you are interested. Number 5. Reusing animations and loops. There might be a scene in your animation where your character is walking, running, turning, fighting and doing things that you previously made. Or doing things that can be easily copied and pasted. Now you can redo the animations all over again and that's fine as well for practice. But if you want to save some time, you can reuse the animations which you already made. For example, if you made a walk cycle and you know where you have the file saved, then you can easily import the walk cycle collection in your scene, copy the keyframe and paste them onto the character that you want to be walking. The same goes for run cycles, turns, backflips, fight loops and so on. For example, in this scene I have my character running and instead of making the run cycle from scratch, I imported my run cycle collection and pasted the movement. Also, in this scene I have the shot of multiple characters fighting in the background. And instead of animating every character one by one, I imported my fight loops and pasted those movements onto the characters and the weapons as well. And by the way, I have the walk cycle, run cycle and also the fight loop tutorial on my channel if you want to check them out. Also, the links for all of those videos will be in the description. So, once you make and organize your animation in a separate Blender file, be sure to save it in a folder that you can easily access. Then, in your animation project seat, go to File, Append and append your animated character. Now go to Pose Mode, select the bones and keyframes of the character that you want to copy, click on Ctrl C, then go out of the pose mode and move on to the character that you want to be animated and you want to have this motion. So again, select the character, go to pose mode and select the bones that you want to be animated and click on I to set a starting keyframe for all of them. Then click on Ctrl V to insert the keyframes that you imported and copied. Now your character will have the same motion. Doing this will save you tons of time during the scenes where you can use the reusable, ready and pre-made loop movements and animations. So that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know if you will use any of these tips in your animations. Also, if you have another tip that you want to share, then be sure to leave it in the comments down below. If you want to see more Blender and Minecraft animation tutorials twice a week and some Minecraft animations every once in a while, then be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want to learn how to make the walk cycles in Blender, then you can check out this video and I will see you there. Thank you for watching.